Let's get started. So um, my talk, now that we have got to it, is a title, Digital Empowerment Through Personal Agents. Uh, I am Oak. I'm one of the co-founders of Valerie and a builder in the OLAS ecosystem. Um, I have, over the past months and even over the past weeks, at the, for example, at the Augment Hackathon last week in uh, Paris, seen lots and lots of interesting experiments being run into end user facing autonomous agent applications. Valerie is obviously very interested in this space as well. Um, but what I wanted to focus on today, rather than going into the details of, um, of those types of applications was to step back as we are so early in this, um, in this journey and focus on the context of why these applications matter. So starting here, I think that although the web is getting more and more powerful, uh, as humans, we tend to get less and less out of it. The ad model which powers the web is very rarely aligned with our individual goals. Uh, public discourse and culture is overrun uh, by the financial, political, and social goals of corporations and governments. And an example that I see uh, personally of this in my own experience online is that anytime I want to use, for example, Twitter to engage in public conversation, I feel constantly sucked into uh, the drama that's uh, being generated there, uh, which is, of course, all motivated by the company's need to keep eyeballs on advertisements. Secondly, we are swamped by annoying and often um, scammy automated systems uh, where again i feel like one in five notifications on twitter are bots and often attempted scams um, thirdly the sheer volume of options uh, in terms of information which is available today is totally overwhelming and similarly there's a huge amount of functionality now available through the internet uh, that as an individual i feel i'm only able to make a tiny use a uh, tiny fraction of the use for with the advent of powerful AI models, I don't see how uh, this is going to get any better. Institutions will have more powerful means of keeping us in their orbits. Bots will become cleverer, scams will get worse, and information and services will become increasingly difficult to navigate and utilize to their fullest. So what's the ideal? I think it's often best to kind of step back and look at the most extreme solution to a to a situation uh, in order to kind of plot a path forward. Um, and so I think that ideal is really to try to reset the playing field and give individuals as much of the capabilities and capacity of the uh, institutions and machines that are um, dominating the, the internet of today. So what does that mean? Uh, firstly, I think it means that we as individuals need to own much more of the means of discovery, um, discovery of content and functionality that is built around our own interests rather than that of misaligned institutions. Secondly, I think we ourselves need to begin to participate a lot more in the machine economy, uh, spreading access to individuals such that we can benefit from machines that can traverse the internet rather than having these solely in the hands of specialized developers. Thirdly, I think we need to increase our discovery capabilities uh, and that means vastly expanding the ability for individuals to reach into the depths of information that's available on the internet and, and adequately process it. And then finally, I think we need to expand the productive capacity of individuals such that we can make use of all of the functionality on the internet as well. These are lofty goals. And as I say, uh, it's in sort of extreme um, uh, kind of vision of what to, what to aim for. But I also think that the path there is no longer entirely out of reach given kind of recent advances in our uh, technological capacity. So firstly, today we have um, un been unlocked by open financial services and, and data via smart contract blockchains and other Web3 infrastructure. 
Secondly, LLM, so given machines a brain, enabling them to process information and take action autonomously. And thirdly, and finally, full autonomy will unlock machines to act fully independently under the ownership of individual humans, unlocking powerful new user experiences that are aligned with our personal goals. So there's, you know, these tools are, these tools have unlocked a path, but we obviously all still need to walk that path and there's an enormous amount to do. And so we want to encourage everyone here to come together to push forward for these goals. For example, Web3 Infra needs to be built out, LLMs need to be honed and autonomous agent capabilities need to be refined. Um, and in part, that is why we put on these events is to, to foster that conversation. Specifically though, um, we have two programs which we are running in order to push forward. Um, and these are both things which folks in the audience here today might want to be involved with. So firstly, for people who are interested in experiencing the future of personal agents today, we have the Secret Agents Program. And this allows select applicants to work directly with Valerie to build personal agent systems around their unique goals. There's a QR code there for a sign up link. Uh, you can also uh, reach out to myself or, or Thomas afterwards if you would like that uh, link and you don't manage to scan it in time. Um, secondly, we uh, have a program which is available for people interested in running agents uh, and developing upon them, um, which is the Agent Predictions Hackathon, uh, which we're running with Gnosis on Gnosis Chain. So here you can run agents and refine their strategies in order to compete for um, essentially rewards which are available uh, through through prediction markets which have been set up and that's a, a total of $3,000 which will be available there. And there will also be prizes available from Valerie and Gnosis for developers who build out um, useful and cool extensions to their system. And um, I'm particularly excited about the agent predictions hackathon um, because it's an extremely concrete application of, of AI in crypto, but specifically um, autonomous agents. So finally, just to kind of round this up and, and summarize it before I, um, before I sign off, Web2, I think, is undoubtedly quite overrun at this point by institutions and machines. And I think we need to find solutions because the situation will worsen. Um, the goal to reach for is to empower individuals to become comparably capable um, to these massive players. And the tools are there to achieve this, but we'd, uh, we've, there's obviously a lot of work to do and we'd love to work with all of you in order to achieve it. So thank you very much for your time. I think there was uh, a bit of <laughs> messing around on my end at the beginning, so I don't know exactly how much time we've got for questions, but if you do have any, then uh, feel free to shoot them through. Okay, so Roberto Enriquez asks, what are some of the use cases of the secret agent program? You can show up. Uh, what are some of the use cases of the Secret Agents Program? So the Secret Agents Program is um, the, the purpose of the Secret Agents Program is basically to build autonomous agents around the personal goals of the people who get selected to be a part of the, the program. Um, so Valerie has uh, you know, carved out dedicated resources to um, essentially build around anybody who gets accepted onto the program's goals. Um, so at this point, we, we won't say like what specifically it's, it's focused on. We really want to build as much as possible around the kind of desires and goals of the, of the people who apply. Uh, 